Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today, I'm gonna be just doing an impromptu video. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I got a lot of comments on my couch makeover video and I really wanna thank you all for that. Thank you so, so much for your lovely comments, for all of your words of encouragement for your beautiful compliments. I really, really appreciate it. And from that, I also received several more subscribers. So I just wanna thank you if who all are newly subscribed. And of course, I wanna show love to my previous subscribers. Thank you all so, so very much. It is, It means the world to me that so many people have found my channel and have found my videos to be helpful, specifically this one. Um, it did take quite a while to put this couch together, so. I'm really glad that you liked it and that you enjoyed it and that it was inspiring for you in any way. So with that, I did wanna answer several questions that I received on that video. And if you are looking for any follow-up to what the couch is looking like or hear any of the answers to these questions, then I hope you stay tuned. So I'm really excited to be doing a Q&A video on my channel. Finally, I love watching Q&A videos of all kinds. So I'm just really excited to have the opportunity to do a Q&A video myself. Okay, so starting with question one, I think this was probably, they're in no particular order. Actually, they're in the order in which they were received. <laughs> I think I kind of went through and just wrote them down as I saw them. But of course there were some multiples. A lot of people wanted to know about stains and keeping it clean. Um, I guess I could start there. Um, there was a small spaghetti stain and it was like somewhere in the front here. And I don't see traces of any spaghetti, which was a very small amount and it was easily cleaned. So, so far so good. Uh, some people asked me about Scotchgard. Did I use Scotchgard or would I consider it? I did not. I did some research on Scotchgard and a lot of the reviews and things that I was finding were really negative as far as using that product. So I didn't want to use that. I figured I'll take my chances. It's not a couch that I just bought like that. So I didn't spend thousands of dollars to get it the way it is. So I decided I would take my chances and if it started to get dirty, I could either reupholster it again or I could just replace it. So not too much concerned about any spots or anything. So um, yeah, so as far as like spot cleaning, I will definitely do that. Also, I will remove the, the cushion covers. So from the seat cushions, those are removable. Um, I didn't do like the best job with um, putting them on strong, but they are holding up really well just with the Velcro strips and everything. And if I was gonna do something more permanent, I would definitely do that before washing it. But so far I haven't had to wash these, but of course that is um, what I expect to do later. And also the back, um, the pillows that are gonna be on the back, I think can either go in the machine, possibly, maybe not the really big one, but I was considering taking those to the laundromat if necessary, or actually making covers for those pillows, which was my original intention. But after all that, I kind of just said, we'll just work with them how they are. But maybe somewhere down the line, I will actually make covers for those so that those can just come off and be washed separately as well. Um, a lot of people did want to know why I bleached the fabric at the beginning and the reason for that is not for the color change so much but to soften the fabric because drop cloth is a really rough material and the bleach really softens it up and makes it more like a cotton fabric. So now the texture of it is just like any other like um, fabric covered couch. And I'm going to just rub on it. So this is the way it feels when if the if this is any indication of the fabric it's soft and comfortable still no problems here's this side corner Um, the couch that I covered was microfiber, so this is more like a standard couch that's non-microfiber as far as I can tell. Maybe just by sitting on it and laying on it, the fabric softened even more, but to me, it's very comfortable. Um, people did want to know what the fabric feels like what um, and if it's comfortable, and I would say that it is. Um, let's see. Does it still look good? Okay, I'm going to get into that. I'm going to show the couch. 
As I said, this is an impromptu video and the couch is in a little bit of a disarray right now. We had company recently, my kids jump all over it, play on it, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like right now, not, you know, staged for YouTube or pictures or anything. I'm gonna go right into the other room and show you exactly the way it looks, just the way it is. So I'm gonna do that a little bit later. So and let me continue with some of the other questions. So a lot of people wanted to know how long it took me and I responded and said it was about two weeks because that was just an estimate. But I went back to my footage and the very first video when I started, I was recording, the first video I started was on September 14th and that was 2021. The last video was October 6th, 2021. So it took about three weeks. Um, somebody wanted to, a couple of people did ask me what would I do differently. Um, one thing I would do differently, I think I can only really think of one thing really. When I soaked it in the bleach, I washed it right after. I put it through the machine one time. So it ran through one cycle through the washing machine and then the dryer with fabric softener and some fabric softener sheets. All of that together was great. But I did notice that there was a slight bleach smell that lasted probably a couple of weeks after. So I think the only thing I would have done differently is to run the cycle a second time. So that's about it. Everything else has been working out great. So I'm happy with that. How much did it cost? And I did, I put this in the description box of the video, but the cost was about $300. And I think I itemized everything there. So if I will also leave that list in this description as well in case you want to check that out but i'm pretty sure it was about 300 dollars. actually didn't go back to check that in the video but whatever is in that original video is what i'm going to put here and i'm pretty sure it was 300 dollars. and like i said i did itemize everything as much as i could because i saved the receipts and um when i put them in the video so i'm pretty sure it should be accurate okay have you done any reupholstery before um, I have never reupholstered a sofa or a sectional or anything before, no couches at all. I did reupholster two chairs that I have a video for, which I will link below. And then I did another two chairs and I don't think I ever filmed it or even, I don't think I recorded that. But um, I use a lot of glue in, when I did that, um, the reupholstering that I did not share. Um, and it was just something that I did with some fabric and I didn't even like the fabric. I ended up taking it off of the two chairs that were matching chairs and um, I took it apart. So I, it looked okay, but the patterning of the fabric that I chose wasn't my favorite. So the work that I did was probably, not, was probably fine. It's just the pattern that it didn't match the room. I didn't really think that it went with my style at the time. So I removed that, but yes, I do have the other two chairs that I reupholstered. Um, and I only did the front half because the back I painted. So I am, uh, some people did mention painting the couch. Um, I didn't want to paint this sectional because we use this couch a lot and I really didn't want to have paint on a couch where we would be sitting on a lot. And, um, I did paint those chairs that I reupholstered because I painted just the outsides and the back. So if you wanna check that video out, you can check it out below. And um, somebody did ask me if I took classes or anything, and no, I didn't take classes. I basically just did little trial and error. So I kind of looked at it as, as, I want the fabric to be tight. So I would pull it, fold it, tuck it, and staple. So wherever it needed to be just pulled and, and tightened up, that's the way I approached it, where everything, I just wanted it to be a nice smooth cover. So. I'm pr I know that this is, um, it probably looks like it would be complicated, but I think it would be easier than a lot of people think. And some people were saying they wouldn't try this, but if you get a, like a cheap piece of some kind of something from maybe a thrift store or something and see what you can do, or if you have a um, piece of furniture that you don't really care about anymore, it's an easy thing that you can test and see how easy it can be. So I really encourage you to give it a try if it's something that you're interested in doing. Um, let's see. A couple of people asked me about the art that's on the wall behind the couch. And I did create that art. It's a line art. And I have a video for that as well. I will link it below in case you want to check it out. Um, I used a projector and traced out the, the flower on a large piece of paper. And then I put it on a board with a frame. And then I did it three times to, you know, keep it to have three different floral pieces there. So again, the video is linked below in case you want to check that one out. Did I use a special thread 
for this um, when I sewed the pieces for the makeover and I did not I just used basic thread for sewing not anything special at all I didn't even consider that I might need a different kind of thread I just went with what I had so that was that um, somebody else wanted to know what kind of sewing machine I have um, and it is a singer sewing machine I got it from my grandmother it's one of like I consider it kind of like antique because it's so old. She um, was staying in a facility for um, assisted living and somebody in there was selling their items and she was like, you have to get this sewing machine. She knew I liked to sew and I had a brother sewing machine before, which I still have, but this singer works much better. So that's what I have and that's what I've been using and I just practice on it. I don't have any kind of sewing skills or anything. I just kind of practice or make things up as I go along. A few people asked me if I'm going to do the ottoman and I did do the ottoman. There is another video for that as well. I will link it below in case you want to see. Um, I had to do the ottoman to match. Um, I considered replacing it and getting a coffee table but you know we lounge in that room. We kind of like kick our feet up and just lay out so I didn't want to take the ottoman away. I um, wanted to make it functional and um, useful for us so I did make that one over and you can check that video out. Do you reupholster for others? No, I do not. I have not done any work for anyone else. I'm not opposed to it. It's not something I really want to take on. I'm always concerned if, you know, if my work is going to be something that somebody else would like. You know, like I will, as you saw when I did the cushions, I just folded the material over and kind of like bootlegged the closure of the cushions um the cushion covers and it works great for me but if i was to do that for someone else i wouldn't do that so it would take me that much more of an effort to make sure it's perfect for someone else whereas i'm happy with it the way it is like once the cushions are in it doesn't pull the material doesn't move or anything it's like as if it were so zipped closed or secured the right way so things that i'm willing to live with or corners that i'm willing to cut i wouldn't want to do that for someone else so um until uh, unless i'm more of a like less of an amateur than i am then i wouldn't do any kind of thing like this for anyone else unless they understood fully what they it might not be like professional level why not a removable slip cover i tried well for me i i don't have the skills or the expertise to sew a slip cover for a sectional of this size i did tr purchase different pieces of sectional well they weren't even sectional slip covers they were couch slip covers and i just got big pieces and i kind of uh folded the material in certain ways and tucked and pushed and squeezed everything so that it fit around the sectional and I had to buy like five six different pieces in order to fit the whole thing in the ottoman included so I didn't I didn't even like the way those slip covers looked they were those snug ones and they had like the texture to the fabric and they were really cute like on our basic couch but when you have it on the entire sectional and it's not even made to fit that it didn't work well and again, as far as making my own slip covers, I'm not very comfortable with doing that. So this was the best option. A lot of people did want to know what um, staple gun I use and I do have it right here. This is the Freeman staple gun. And the staples slide right in there. And then it closes up and you pull this trigger. This plugs into the air compressor, which I have right here. So this pulls back and slips right on. And there you go. And I basically used a bunch of these staples. Porter cable. Is that what it is? Yep. Porter cable. It staples in in various sizes or lengths depending on what I was stapling into. And let me just give you a, okay, so again, let me just show this really quick. And I got this from Home Depot. I'll link it below. And the air compressor is also from Home Depot. I, I keep it in its original box. So this is what it looks like. And I've, of course, in the video, you didn't hear the sound, but this thing is crazy loud when it's filling back up with air. So um, this is what it looks like. Uh. 
and there's all the items that it comes with I think I'm showing that those are all the things that are included in here all right that's that let me just go down my list does it still look good the couch yep still looks good um okay so i think we're ready to go take a look in the other room so you can see exactly what the couch is looking like right now let's go okay so as i mentioned here is the couch after being laid on jumped on by company and us i didn't do anything at all i literally walked in here didn't even think about what the couch was going to look like before I said that, before I decided to start recording this. But um, I'm going to straighten this up on camera, but I'm just going to go down the line and show you how it looks. Okay, might be a little bit better if I have the window open. So I just open the curtains so you can see a little bit better before I fix it up get all the light that I can to give a full and somebody else did mention about um, pillows I will I love the idea of changing out the pillows so right now I still have the same pillows that I started with for like the fall and winter but I I do intend to change out the pillows too and if you see any lumps in this, this is um, a makeshifted pillow as well because there used to be a chaise that came out here and I cut that off. <laughs> so I updated this couch once before, but I wasn't making videos at that time, so I never recorded it. Um, so I cut that chaise part off and, you know, stopped the wood back here. And then I also had to cut the pillow and there are some coils and springs inside here that have gotten shifted out over time of sitting on it so you kind of see that lump there so I might have to do a little bit of adjusting inside that cushion to make it sit better if I really want to but it hasn't bothered us so far so I probably won't but can always do that one day if I feel like it all right so this is it in the nice bright sun still looks good and I don't know if you can tell there's a slight discoloration difference in the fabric because each package of the drop cloth could possibly be a different shade so if you wanted to do this I because I did forget about that if you wanted to do a project like this it's best to try to buy as much of the fabric at one time as you can because if you have to go back to, to the store you might get a different shipment and the fabric colors might not be perfect so this is slightly lighter than that one and that one is lighter too so this one was a different batch but still the outcome is is not enough for me to change it or anything like that but just uh, something to keep in mind if you wanted to do this Thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you for your support, all your lovely comments, all of your well wishes. Thank you, thank you, and I will see you in the next one.